Gary, did you still under oath? <coughs> okay. There's a question on the floor, sir, when we broke. Do you mm -hmm. recall what it was? Uh, the last question, excuse me. <clears throat> the last question before we broke? Yes. 
um, referred to something about me not liking black people? I asked you if uh, that was true. No, it's not true. Uh, sir, is it not a fact that uh, you engage in conversations that involve the uh, most racially derogatory term you can use against a black person? Yes. Right. Uh, and what is that term? Um, does he have to say a judge? Yes, he does. What uh, is it? You want me to say a judge? Nigger. And you use that uh, on a regular... judge, I would like the instruction to be given, if you will. No, go ahead. I'll do it at the end. At the end of his testimony? At the end of his testimony. You use it a lot, don't you? No. Uh, you had an opportunity to review a, a representative sample of your uh, emails for uh, about a three-month period. Tax messages. Tax messages, yes. And is it true that you utilize that term on numerous occasions just in that brief snippet of your life? Out of eight months of text messages, which would probably add up to be 3,000 text messages a month, so 24,000, I saw maybe 10 to 20 text messages. Let's just talk about... Uh, Let's just talk about the one she saw. Yes, ma'am. And at or about the time of these events, let's talk about from uh, February uh, through, my eyes are going on me, the end of April. It's fair to say that about 15 or 20 times you use that. 15 or 20 times? Yeah. I, I don't know the exact number. And when you use it, you use it in a derogatory way, don't you? No. Um, you're not uh, trying to demean the person at the other end of the conversation? Absolutely not. You never um, utilize it in a mean way? No. And uh, you use other racial, uh, racially insensitive language, don't you? I don't believe so. Um, How is you, this relevant, Judge? I'm going to give you some latitude. Come here, Judge. Okay. Uh, you use uh, the term Negro? Um, I'm sorry, there. Yes. Okay. And, sir, You like to joke about uh, beating up N-word people, is that right? No. Say the word. I will judge. If instructed to do so, I apologize. You like to joke about beating up niggers? No. Right. There's text message in there that relates to that, is there not? No. Would you like me to read it to you? Okay. Okay, I read this one. And you're not joking about beating up niggers in that? No. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about it then. This text message exchange, uh, according to your records, occurred on 3-15-2015, about 6-31-05 uh, p.m. Does that sound about right? Yes. And were you asked the question, yeah, at least give me the satisfaction of knowing that you were out there beating niggers right now. Judge, can we identify who the sender of this is and who's receiving it? I'm not clear. And I don't think the jury... I think I said he received it. But do we know who sent it? Did you receive that text? Yes, ma'am. All right. And at this point, Judge, I'm going to ask the prosecutor for okay. stipulation. Okay, very Mr. Good. Melendez is not involved in any of these texts. I understand that. Thank you, Judge. This, these statements are limited only to this witness's bias, alleged bias. Go ahead, counsel. All right. So you received a uh, text message, yeah, at least give me the satisfaction satisfaction of knowing that you're out there beating niggers right now. Um, and you know who sent that to you, correct? I would not double check and no, I don't. It wasn't the department. Of course not, no. And your response was LOL. What is LOL? Mean? Can I follow Just got done with one. Okay. Is that what you texted back? Yes. Okay. So you were joking about beating up black people, weren't you? No. How else would you take that? That word, when I use that word, it is it has never been. And I would never use it towards a certain person 
or a certain race. It was a word that I've used in general conversation. Um, it's a extremely it's an inappropriate word. I understand that, and I apologize that it does have to be brought up here today in court for unknown reasons. But well, you're accused of being on the street when a black man was getting beat. That's, That's an true. improper question. He's not accused of anything. He's not been charged. You were present when that happened. Is that correct? Conjunction with this text message that you're referring to? Well, this is in March, correct? Okay. The, text message. the events in question uh, had already occurred at the end of January, correct? Okay. Yes, and then I'm yes. I'm sorry, Judge. And you're laughing out loud about doing it, and you just got done with one. In January? No, I'm just Wait, saying. I'll tell you what we're going to do, because here's the problem. Let's get a copy for the witness. He has a copy. Well, I understand the dates. He's comparing the March. Have, yes, ma'am. Okay, why don't you get that? Okay. Okay, period. <laughs> now, specifically, question. The exchange we just talked about, the one where, yeah, at least give me the satisfaction of knowing that you're out there beating niggers right now, and your response, LOL, just got done with one was on the heels of, or after, the events involving Floyd Depp. Is that correct? Take a look. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sorry. I just have a lot of people working on the end of this morning. That's fine. That's okay. You want me to show it to them? Why don't you do that? Speak. I mean, I want to find if he's going to continue to ask me. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Just 
What about the LOL? What is that? Mm -hmm. LOL. Okay. Is that uh, a term used when something is funny? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So the fact that he, you got a text that said that someone was beating niggers, you thought that was amusing by you sending out a, a, a check that said LOL? Yes or no? I guess I don't understand. I don't remember the, the entire subject of the text. You understand what LOL means? Yes, ma'am. You understand that you responded with by, with that statement with the LOL. Did you find that to be amusing? Answer the question, witness. I, I don't find it to be amusing, but the text message I wrote, yes. Okay. Okay, we'll start. Uh, yeah, so the light Let's take the lights down. Just, we're going to show, show a movie again. Very good, thank you. Um, are we done with those taxes? We are, Judge. Okay, very good. Cut the light back on. I just want to indicate for the record that statements have been made, have been admitted to show bias against a witness in this matter. This statement is offered as evidence only against the witness to show his bias and his testimony. It cannot be used against the defendant, and you must not do so. You must only consider the statement in terms of the credibility of the witness and for no other reason. That is a law that you are to apply in this particular matter as it relates to Mr. Melendez. Cut the lights off. <coughs> Uh, young Mr. Donaldson, if you could tell uh, the jury and the judge uh, where we're at and what we're on. Sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'll be Mr. DeFranco, I have an hour. Yes. Right. They tag team. Yeah. 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 Yes. Young you recognize your son? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you, Judge. I, I was listening to. Uh, at, at this time, we are in People's Exhibit 1. This is uh, Sergeant Kreitzer's in card video. We are at timestamp 214704. Very good. You make a seat. Thank you. Can you see that? Now, just stop it for one second, please. Um, <laughs> just to give you some context, sir. This is uh, <clears throat> the tail end of these events, and this is Sergeant Kreitzer's video. I'm looking at it. If you recall, uh, we were talking about tapping out, tapping in, and all of that during your testimony. I want, to, I want you to watch that with that in the back of your head. You know, the video. Did you see the strikes to the back of the uh, officer Melendez? Objection to the reference strikes. Or pass. Pass. To the uh, back of Mr. Uh, Melendez when uh, he was engaged with Mr. Dunn. By Officer Rainism? Yes. Yes. And uh, how do you interpret what you observed there? Judge, first of all, all right, the question should be foundation. Was you aware that that occurred? Sustained. Ask it another way and don't say strikes. What happened uh, immediately after the two taps to the back? Do you want to see it again? Yes.
You can end it. Do you see what I was referring to, sir? Yes, sir. What happened? <coughs> And would you agree that on that video we just saw is a different view of the quote eight officers that took to subdue Mr. Dark? I thought it was a different view? Yes. Yes. Um, first seen video. Your Honor, is this at the scene? Yes. Because we are now going to be People's Exhibit 5, File 2. We are at 115. And for all intents and purposes, for the record, this is at the scene of the pictures that are being of. Uh, seals that are being played, and once we get to a different area, we'll announce that, right? Yeah, yes, Judge. This is timestamp 2201.59 in People's Exhibit 5, File 2. Um, we'll start at 1 minute and 12 seconds of this particular file. Very good. <clears throat> you can stop it. Sir, did you see three individuals uh, put their fists together uh, during the course of that? For a fist bump? Yeah. Yes. Right. What's a fist bump, sir? Two fists coming together. What does that symbolize? Um, it's an exchange of well, handshake. Hold on a sec. Can I, can I object to that? And the only reason why I say it is we haven't identified who it is that fist bump, and now we're going to ask the question, what did they mean by it? Okay, very good. Um, what is overall? What normally does a fist bump mean? Uh, greeting. A greeting. Okay, go ahead. Do you know who the three people were who greeted each other with a fist bump? I saw myself and Officer Zabko fist bump. Would you like to uh, back it up and see who else was, uh, was the third person? Sure. Would you do that again? Yeah. Starting at same point. You know what the third person is now? Officer Ray Nazel. So the three were again who? Myself, Officer Zopko, and Officer Ray Nazel. That had nothing to do with what just occurred. That was a hello, how are you? It was a greeting. We've been at the scene for a while. <coughs> who is this? Your Honor, who was at the scene for a while? <coughs> All of you had been at the scene for a while, is that correct? Officer Zopko just showed up on scene. All right, um, Judge, can we approach for one second? Thank you for the opportunity for the sidebar, Judge. Did you want the lights off again? Yes, please. Uh, Mr. DeFranco, I think I got it right this time. This now is in a where, uh, Mr. Prosky? I'm sorry, Judge. This is People's Exhibit, uh, People's Exhibit 3, and it is... Uh, the file entitled uh, Booking, first file on that exhibit, and it is at the uh, 12 minute and 53 second mark. It is time stamped in the top corner, 
but this is a different location, is that correct? This is the booking room area of the Exeter Police Department, and the time stamp at the top, uh, my eyes fail me. I can't see it. Um, Can you assist us, please? 222644, Your Honor. Very good. And you, obje you objected at sidebar, Mr. Thomas. Judge, I do object. Uh, can we at least identify who's in this video? Well, please, yes, sir. Can you tell from now who's, uh, at this point who's in the video? Myself, Officer Melendez, Auxiliary Officer Kosmowski, Officer Randazzo, and Officer Anika. Okay, I'm looking for the pointer. Uh, where is, uh, just descriptively, where is... Wait a minute, just wait.
Bobby will be checking.
thing in the I'm fine, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Positive. Thank you. I'm okay, ma'am. Thank you. If you want me to, I will. Yeah, I'll just And I will too, Judge. Everybody take the jet. Why don't you take the jet? I'm trying to take this shirt off. Beat me. I know that I'm right. All right, here, the green tree. All right, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence, Your Honor. Uh, sir, during the break, a point was presented to you, is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied you understand how to utilize it in the exam? Okay. Can you identify the people that are shown in that video? Myself? All right. And that's the person to the farthest left and closer to the camera. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Next person. Officer Melendez. Officer Melendez would be between you and the second line moving from left to right. And he appears to be up near the desk area. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Next one, please. Auxiliary Officer Kozmowski. Um, Can you spell that last name? No, I can't, ma'am. Not correctly. That's, judges ask questions like that when they want to stall. I need the lights off. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I love the truck. Okay. <laughs> this is Officer Randazzle. All right. Uh, the uh, name you couldn't spell would be the third moving from left to right. Is that correct? Officer, Auxiliary Officer Cosmos. All right. And uh, Officer Randazzle is farthest to the right, uh, basically at the end of the bench yard. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, point. That's Officer Arnico. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. I believe it. Arnico's at the desk as well. Yes, sir. I see. All right. Sorry, Judge. We're in the wrong spot. Give me one second, Judge. I'm sorry. 
Did we put it on the record where we were before? We did. I thought we did before break. I just want to make well, let's sure. Do it again, okay? yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, Judge. This is uh, two seconds uh, further in the timestamp. It's now 22 26 43, and it is 12 50 on this uh, player. I'm sorry. No, sir. Uh, no news to stop it, please. Uh, are the same people in pretty much the same place in this one, or do we need to move them around? No, they're the same. Okay, go ahead. You note the time, please. Yeah, the time is timestamp 22 27 43, 1437 into this, into this clip. Stop it. At the far left of the screen, there's a bench. Is that correct? I'm sorry, what was that? The far left of the screen, there's a bench. I mean, your point is, you can use this one. Yeah, you were just pointing at the one thing. That's right here. Yes. And uh, who is that at that bench? At the bench, Officer Randazzo. Okay. This is Officer Randazzo. Yes, sir. So it was Officer Randazzo that was uh, on the bench uh, doing something? Objection. We haven't seen that yet. Excuse me? Oh, I misspoke. Okay, thank you. And where are you? Use your pointer. Right there. And what was he doing? He was demonstrating a, uh, a bodyboard maneuver that he we were discussing a uh, honeymoon, upcoming honeymoon with Officer Melendez, and he was talking a trip to head out of Mexico. Wait a minute, he was, well, let's read that, because I want to see if he was playing it with the moves on that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, replay that. And it's a body move, you say? It's like a bodyboarding, um, not surfing, but. Judge. 
he's interpreting what somebody no, did. I wanna, I'm if he's going to say what somebody said, that's hearsay. No, 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 no. Strike it. I agree, and the court is going to strike it. Demonstrate for us what you see and what you interpreted that to be. Well, that's what he told us why he was doing it. Okay. Oh, okay. Clay? The court is going to disregard that last Thank statement. Thank you. That it was a body board. Thank you. For the upcoming. <coughs> and for the record, what's this phone? <coughs> You want me to explain it, Judge? Oh. Uh, time stamp on the... Um, yes, time stamp is 22, 28, 10. And were you guys at all talking about what had just happened out on the street? Objection, you're saying. Okay, no, he can ask whether, strike that, rephrase. Were you talking about it? As far as what? What had just happened on the street? With Mr. Dent. During right now? Yeah. No. Um, what are all the officers doing uh, with, uh, with the wiping motions? I believe they're cleaning their uniforms. Um, From what? Of what? Do you know? Dirt, um, maybe blood. And uh, is, is it fair to uh, conclude that they were cleaning white dense blood off of them? Objection. Can we have a foundation here? He's, he's tentative about what he's saying. If they want to know what he did or what he was doing, I get it. I agree. Were you cleaning were you cleaning blood off your uniform? Uh, no, I don't believe I didn't have any. Okay. Let me ask a question. From the time that Mr. Dent was brought in until the this particular crime, how, how much time had elapsed? Twenty four hours, thirty two, uh five hours, hours, The time's up in the corner. From the time Mr. Dent was brought in, booked, and and this was displayed, how much time would it last? I believe this was after the, we were waiting for rescue, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 20 10 minutes, minutes, 10, 20 minutes. So 10 minutes after Mr. Dent is brought in, that's when we're on this particular uh, video, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. I have no further questions. I'm curious, you see it. You didn't know if it was blood or dirt that they were wiping off. What did you see, if anything? Did you see anything on the uniforms? On which officer? On all of uh, uh, the one, uh, <coughs> the one that was doing a bodyboard. I mean, doing the move on the. Uh, I really never paid attention to either one as far as his uniform. What led you to conclude that it was either blood or dirt? <coughs> well, they were using cleaning products. I'm assuming they were cleaning something that it didn't want on their uniform. You, there was a cleaning product. Up yes, ma'am. What was it? Uh, some generic cleaning product in a can. They did. Um, what was the cleaning? I missed that product. Uh, Mr. Dent. They were cleaning their uniforms. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cross examination. Only, only one. Was that cleaning product a disinfectant? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, dear. Uh, cut the lights on. I'm sorry. Okay, very good. The court is going to indicate again, as I've indicated, this testimony is related only to this witness. It is offered as evidence only against the witness to show his bias, and his testimony cannot be used against uh, the defendant, and you must not do so. You must only consider the same in terms of credibility of witnesses for no other reason. Thank you so much. Anything further? No, Judge. Step down. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Next witness. People call Floyd Dunn. Floyd Dunn. He's in across the hall. <coughs> Mr. Dunn. Yes,
I dedicated uh, because of the warfare. Listen to me when I'm talking to you. Because I indicate you can take the jacket off. I did. Mr. Warren, can you assist your phone? And you can take your water up too, also, sir. Sir, raise your right hand. Step forward. Raise your right hand. Do you saw me swear if I'm testimony about to get this as a truth and the truth, nothing but the truth and only God? Please be seated. State your name for the record, your first and last name. First name Floyd, F-L-O-Y-D, last name Dent, D-E-N-T. You may proceed, Council Law. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Dent, uh, you and I have met before, is that correct? Yes. And do uh, you recall the first time that we met? Yes. Were you facing criminal charges at that time? Yes. And were you in the company of your lawyer at that time? Yes. And uh, our office had charged you, is that correct? The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office had yes. charged you? Uh, and those charges were ultimately dismissed, is that correct? Yes. And, sir, how old are you? And uh, probably, uh, I'm going to ask how tall you are first. How, how tall are you? I'm 5'8". Uh, five, five I say that too. Uh, how much do you weigh, sir? I weigh 2.22. Uh, that's not a fair question. Probably most everybody lies a little bit. But it's in the ballpark, right? Yes. And, sir, what do you do for a living? I work at Ford Motor Company. And how long have you worked at Ford Motor Company? Thirty-eight years. And did you find yourself in the city of Angstra on the 28th day of January during the late evening hours, uh, around 9.45 yes. or thereabouts? Yes. And were you in a vehicle? Yes. What kind of vehicle were you at? I was in a tan Cadillac CTS. And did it have a regular plate on it? No, paper plate. And, sir, did you have a driver's license? No. Right. Uh, are you sure to say you have trouble having a valid driver's license? Well, I did. Yeah. You did, yeah. Right. right. And besides that, you have any criminal record? No. And, sir, did there come a point in time when you were in the city next to the police car uh, pulled up behind you and turned on their lights? Yes. Do right. you remember what road you were on? I was on <coughs> Oakland Boulevard going west. Right. Does that change names at some point in time? The same road has a different name a little further down? Yes. Do you remember what the name of it is further down? No. Do you remember about where you were when you got, uh, you actually pulled over? Yes, I pulled over uh, on the first block before East Road. Um, What's located there? It's old, it's the police station. The, the one that uh, they use now or another one? Uh, Enough 
Okay. It's the closed Dexter Police Station. Is that correct? Yes. Did you try to run away from the police when they put their lights on you? No. Would you agree it took a little while for you to pull over, 30, 40 seconds, something like that? Yes, I was uh, dodging potholes, plus I wait to get into light. Okay. There are street lights along there, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Is it better let down by the police station? Yes. Okay. And um, did you ever speed up and take off? No. Uh, and you pulled over? Yes, pulled over to the right. And what happened when you pulled off? When I pulled over to the right, I opened the driver's door and held both arms out. Why'd you do that? Why'd you open the door number one and why'd you put the arms out number two? The reason I opened the door was, was because I had, uh, had washed my car earlier and I didn't want my when I get smeared from uh, letting them down. No, I didn't understand that. Can you tell me why why that is? Why, why, I don't understand, and maybe some jurors might not understand. Why, why now? He's talking about why you didn't let your window down because you just had washed your car. Why I didn't let my window down? Yeah. Because I didn't want to uh, have to re, re-dry it off. Okay. So when your window goes down and you put it back up, sometimes there's streets of water on it. Is that what you're saying or something different? Uh, there's streets of water on it. Okay. So you opened your door. Did you throw your door open? No, I opened my door up. And you and said you put your hands out. Uh, I put both arms out. Why did Why did you do that? To let the officer know I didn't have any weapons. Okay. Were you screaming? No. Right. Were you reaching across the car trying to... Hide something or get a gun or something? No. What happened next? When I, uh, uh, when I reached my, uh, put my arms at the, uh, door when I opened it, an officer approached me on the uh, right side and another officer approached me with a gun. Okay, I, want, I want to stop you for a second. So you're, you're hesitating during the course of your uh, testimony. Um, do you have uh, problems uh, processing? Yes. Okay. And uh, did you have problems processing before these events? No. Um, and you've had them since? Yes. Okay. When, I, when I use the, the term uh, problem processing, what does that mean to you? Uh, what's happening in terms of your recollection and your memory? Uh, meaning that I can't uh, remember things. Uh, uh, it takes me a while to catch up to think about what uh, someone telling me or asking me. Okay. Have you had any trouble with the questions I've asked you so far? No. Would you let me know if you do? Okay. Okay. Um, sir, when the two police officers uh, arrived, they, you know, when you first noticed them, were they both on your side of the car, the driver's side, or did you see them somewhere? Uh, they were both on the driver's side. And uh, what happened then? Um, the guy with the gun was on the, uh, by the end of the door, another guy, uh, with a black skull cap on. They came to the car, and the guy with the gun told me, get out the car, or I'll blow your... Say what he said. He said, get out the car, I'll blow your motherfucking head off. So as I was getting out the car, the officer that had the skull cap on, he snatched me out the car, and threw me... Um... <clears throat> Threw me to the ground, you know. But, uh, yeah, let me interrupt you for a second, but that's okay. Before that happened, did you reach over to the side, uh, passenger side of the car? No. Were you making verbal threats, threatening to kill anybody? No. Or, or saying anything, don't bother me, anything like that? No. So you got thrown to the ground, what happened? 
when I got thrown to the ground, one officer grabbed my arm and and my right knee had hit the ground. And I had kind of rolled over to my right. That's when my right arm got cut up under my my side. And the, the other officer was, had grabbed my arm and tried to handcuff me. And then the other officer started uh, choking me, you know, uh, when I got down to the ground. Do you have a memory of uh, that officer? Uh, who you had? What it looked like? Yes. Uh, would you recognize him if you saw him again? Yes. Could you point to him and describe him? Judge, we will stipulate to identification. There's no doubt who was out there that night. I was right there in the uh, purple uh, tie. For, for the record indicating the person who defended Melinda. Yes. Uh, was was he the one that had you strike that? Tell me again, uh, is he the man you described as having uh, the gun? Yes. And he was the one that uh, told you to get out of the car and not right. a nice word? Right. And uh, what happened when you hit the ground? What was he doing to you when you hit the ground? When I hit the ground, he had jumped, jumped on me and grabbed me by the... Uh, throat and, and you just go, go ahead I'm sorry and he started he started choking me then he, and he started beating me in the head with something when you say beating you in the head was he hitting you with an object hitting you with his fist or do you know you know your honor I, I would like him not to be led I gave him choices or yeah, an well, well, well you're asking about an object nobody ever brought up an object Same. I'm going to give a little deference because of his um, ability, inability to comprehend, um, but you can't move. Go ahead. Go ahead. You tell the jury what happened. Uh, when he was hit. Tell me what you saw. And I saw a uh, um, sharp object in his, in his hand when he uh, was beating him side of the uh, right side of my head. And that's when I had covered up my, tried to cover up my right side of my face, you know, and I, my left arm was being out like this. Okay, so, for the record, you have your right arm underneath you, and my right arm your, near your belly, my face. and you've got your left arm extended about shoulder level off to the side. Is right. That right. Okay, fully extended. Go ahead. Right, and the officer was trying to I think he put the handcuffs on me, and... Was that the same one with the gun? No, there's another officer going to uh, Black Star Cap. And he was the one, uh, like I said, he had grabbed my arm and then and I tried to protect my right side of my uh, uh, face. That's when um, Melendez started, uh, started beating me in the head, you know, and I... Told him, uh, begging him to stop, I can't breathe. No, could you not breathe because he was beating you in the head or for some other reason? Because he was uh, trying to kill me. I mean, he choked me so hard I couldn't, I couldn't catch my breath. So you, when you say he choked you, uh, <coughs> did you feel pressure around your neck? Yes, I felt pressure real, I mean, yes, I did. Right. Again, and, leading judge. And what was causing the pressure? He had me in a uh, strangling position. Okay. When you say strangling position, I describe for the judges of the facts what you mean. Um, he was, had his uh, right, he had his arm up under my throat, uh, kind of cuffed my uh, windpipe. You know. He had his uh, right arm uh, crooked at the elbow, right. extended upward towards his chin area, forming a B area, and then he pointed to his neck as though that's where it was. Okay, and where was the pressure applied? Show us. What's your hand? Pressure applied right here. Uh, in the case of the Adam's apple location. Right. Okay, go ahead. Did he say anything after you said, I can't breathe? He didn't say a word. He kept on uh, choking me. 
And how long did that go on? That went on for about, uh, from, from three to five minutes. Because I was trying to catch my breath and I was moving my head, you know, kind of tightening my neck so uh, uh, I can get his arm around my neck. Did other officers show up at the scene? Uh, there was a lot of officers showed up. I, I remember uh, <coughs> I was being kicked in the side. Uh, I heard one officer say, when I was... Objection. Foundation. Did you... Did um, any equipment get used during you? Yes. Yes. Oh. I, did you get tased? Yes, I got tased a lot. I heard somebody in the back say, "Tased, motherfucker." Well, you don't know who that. I know who it was. Okay. And certainly wasn't Mr. Melendez. He was right there, right? No, it wasn't him. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. After you were tased and kicked and beat and strangled. How many times were you tased? Uh, at least three to four times. Can you describe how you knew you were being tased three to four? What did it feel like? It was a, uh, like a burning sensation. Okay. Did you have a coat on out there? I had a little light jacket. Gloves, light jacket. Okay. When it was over, did, uh, uh, did they put you in a police car, or did you go into no. an ambulance? Well, uh, after, after uh, the choking and everything, they stood me up in front of the police car. And uh, they stood me up in front of the police car, and then that's when I told him, uh, um, <coughs> why, why did you beat me like this? And I felt the opportunity to spread my legs and kick my legs apart. Objection. Can, can, we, can we know who we're talking about when he says he... It's the same. Just, if you don't know, if you either you just say, if you know a police officer or if you know if it's Mr. Melendez, okay? Do you understand? If those are the individuals, if there's somebody else, let us know. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So who was doing who, who brought you up to the car and was uh, uh, kicking your feet apart to search it? Do you know who it was? I'm a Mendez and, uh, and like a sh state trooper. I mean, was it a police officer? Yes. All right. And uh, did you get put in a car? Yes, I got put in a car. Okay. Uh, uh, were you put in the car cuffed or not? Yes. And did they leave you in the back seat? Yes, I was left in the back seat for about... 20 to 30 minutes. 20, I mean, from 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. And where did you go from the same? One, one it took two, me uh, straight to the uh, precinct. Didn't go to the hospital? No. Had you been hurt? Yes, I was bleeding real bad. My head was was swollen up so big, I had begged him, I need to uh, seek medical attention. And who did you tell that to? Do you remember? I told that to uh told to the officer that was in the front seat. Okay. You don't know who that officer was? Well he had a black skull cap on. Okay. Was it one of the two that you interacted with to begin with? Yes. Okay. Not Officer Melinda's No, not him. Okay. Any further When you got to the precinct what happened? Well, when I got to the precinct uh, they it took me to this uh, jail cell and they sh started searching me and they told me sh strip down to my uh, down to my uh, shorts and that's when they took my uh, photo photo shot 
me holding the uh, uh, paper with the numbers on it. Did anybody render you any medical care before you had your photo taken? No. Do you recall whether or not they tried to take your photo once or twice? You know? They tried to they took the photo uh, twice. Okay. And was there a difference between the two photos? Yes, one was the uh, first photo was taken on uh, January 28th, and the other one was taken on January 30th. Okay. Uh, why was there one taken on January 30th? Uh, Projection Foundation. Right. Where were you between January 28th and January 30th? I was in a uh, Garden City Hospital. Okay. As a result of the beating? Right, as a result of the uh, beating. When did the ambulance show up for you to go to the house? The ambulance showed up. I said maybe about, about 20 minutes later after I had heard someone say, we need to get him to the doctor. What? He's going to testify with somebody else today. One of the rules is you're not supposed to talk about what other people said, only what you observe. Yes. Okay. Has anybody from the Angster Police Department ever asked you your side of the story? At what time, sir? Between that date and today? Mm, no. What sort of injuries did you sustain, if you know? And don't describe anything medically. Just say what was, if the something was hurting or not. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, good. Go ahead. Uh, right side of my uh, head, uh, my uh, ribs, and my... Uh, And a broken, broken nose, and a broken uh, eye audible. And that night, immediately after the uh, the beating, how were you feeling? In other words, were you able to, were you hurting, were you able to think? Uh, what was your reaction to the beating uh, uh, physically and, and mentally? I feel pretty bad. Okay. Uh, physically or mentally or both? Both. Were you high that night? No. Were you drunk that night? No. Were you acting like a um, uh, fueled up crackhead threatening police officer? No. Cross examination. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Dent, you and I have talked once before. Yes. All right. That was at a prior hearing where you were under oath? Yes. You're here today. Your lawyer's here today? Yes. Uh, uh, this is the lawyer that you had for your criminal and your civil case? Yes. When you had, uh, uh, when you were under charges, you were a criminal in a case that was brought from the city of Inkster? Yes. Uh, you had a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, and you were represented. Is that right? Yes. Prosecutor asked you, why didn't you talk to anybody? Did anybody in Inkster talk to you? You've been represented by a lawyer since almost the very beginning in this case. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And did you know whether, uh, as a person who's represented by a lawyer, whether or not the Inkster Police Department could come to you and ask you for your version of what happened? No. no. Did you know that there are prohibitions against police or prosecutors calling you 
when you are represented by a lawyer? Yes. Okay. Did we establish when he was represented by a lawyer? When, when did Mr. Rule uh, enter his first appearance for you? Mr. Rule entered his first appearance. In the criminal case, right? Yes. When you were charged in the criminal case, right? Yes. A few days after you were out of the hospital, right? Yes. Okay. Now. You were asked a series of questions by the prosecutor, um, and, and I want to say to you that if you really don't understand what I'm saying, I'll, I'll rephrase it for you, because I, I, I don't want to confuse you in any way. But you understood the questions he was asking you, didn't you? Yes. All right. You've been through the events of this matter on many, many occasions, have you not? Yes. That's a yes. You've even been on television talking about the case, haven't you? Yes. Uh, how many times did you go on TV about this case, if you know? Uh, about five times. Five times. And during that time, you were accompanied by your lawyer, who's sitting here in court today, right? Yes. When you came into court today, when you walked in the door with your lawyer, well, I should ask you, did you walk in with your lawyer? Yes. Did you walk in there with a Channel 4 news reporter as well? Today? No. Today? Today. Today. No, I can't even You know who Kevin Dietz is? Yes. He was right behind you, wasn't he? Do you know? No, I don't know. Okay. Did you talk to Kevin Dietz today? Yes, I have him seen my side. But you didn't come in with him? Did you, no, talk, I didn't come you, did you talk? Did you do an interview today? No. But did you see and talk to Kevin Dietz today? Yeah, we spoke. Okay. Oh, All right. Now, 57 years old, 58 now, right? Right, 58. Okay. You're a big guy, aren't you? I ain't that big. Okay. You're big enough to struggle with those police officers for the time that you said that you struggled with them. I didn't struggle with them. You didn't resist in any way. No, I didn't resist. You didn't way. resist. Wait a okay. Let him ask the question. I'll let you answer. Go ahead. No, I didn't resist in any way. You didn't refuse to put your hands behind your back. I didn't refuse. You didn't refuse to submit to the police officer's orders that you uh, that you uh, that you be still. I didn't refuse. And um, you were on the ground with the police officers for approximately you say three to five minutes. Would you agree if I told you it was a little bit more than it was about two minutes? It wasn't about two minutes. It was more than two minutes. Okay, we're not gonna argue. No. Go ahead, just ask the question. Uh, okay. And during that whole time, you said you couldn't breathe. Right. And uh, did you pass out? Yes, I did. Uh, after he had choked me for so long, that I, I he, the officer had choked me for so long, I gave up. You gave up? Because I, I couldn't breathe. You gave up, you couldn't breathe, and you passed out? Well, I uh, passed out for about a minute, you know. You passed out for about a minute? Right. Okay. And and when you mean passed out, you mean like you were unconscious and you can't remember anything. Right? Yes. A little okay. bit. And during that period of time, obviously, you would not have been struggling. Correct? I was struggling. How do you know if he was passed out? Well, he said he was passed out. Well, then he don't know if he was struggling. Well, <laughs> okay. Are you telling me that you were struggling when you were passed out, or are you telling me you didn't struggle what at all? Do you not? I wasn't struggling. Okay. Now, you were taken to the hospital. Yes. When you went to the hospital, there was uh, people there who were going to take care of you, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know whether or not they gave you any medication? They gave me a lot of medication. You remember whether or not they gave you any morphine? It was, I think so. Yeah. You believe they did? They gave you a shot for morphine, um, a shot for, for pain, right? Yeah, they gave me a lot of shots. But did they give you a shot for yeah, pain? Yes, they did. Okay, they probably told you that they were going to give you a shot for pain. Right? No, they never, they never told me. Okay, they just gave you a shot. Okay. Your Honor, we're going to be admitting my circulation over the act of life. Hold the roll, go ahead. Okay. You complained to them at the time 
that you'd been uh, that you've been brutalized? Yes. All right. Did did they listen to you? Who is they? Did. The people at the hospital who were going to treat him. Did you? Yes, they. Uh, that's what I told them. Do you remember having any conversations with any physicians or nurses? No. Can you remember uh, what the physician looked like who was taking care of you when you went to the hospital? I can't remember. Can you remember what the nurses looked like who were taking the information from you? I can't remember. Okay. Remember telling them that you were choked and that you were choked unconscious? Do you remember saying that? Yes, I do remember saying that. You said that? you remember telling them that you were having problems with your neck? Yes. Do you remember them examining your neck? I don't remember them examining my neck. Do you remember them giving you physical treatment relating to the injuries that you were describing to them? Yes. I want to cut something out. Uh, I, I'm going to switch gears for a second, okay? You were being treated for things that happened to your face and your head, correct? Yes. All right. You mentioned that you were kicked, correct? Yes. Um, Officer Melendez didn't kick you, did he? Do you know who kicked you, sir? No, I can't remember. Okay. I know it's not right. The injuries that you're complaining about are the injuries that occurred to you when you were uh, when you were engaged with Officer Melendez on your face and your head, correct? Went out. Let me rephrase it so that I can help you with it. Okay. You having trouble? Uh, yeah. I mean, are, are you in pain right now? No, I just have. I just can't remember. Okay. Well, do the best you can. Okay. Um. So that night, you did not go to the budget inn, did you? No. Were you on Michigan Avenue at all that night? Mm. Yes, I was on Michigan Avenue, but I went, turned around and went to an apartment building. Okay. Uh, where were you on <coughs> Michigan Avenue, if you could tell me? And I was drove across, going, going east down Michigan Avenue, and I made a U-turn by the uh, tire company to get down to the street where I was at, at the apartment complex. Okay. Would that have been the first ability to turn before you got to Fairbairn? I, I turned on the first turnaround after going east, going across John Daly. Okay. And it was as a result that you went in there, but did you go further east on Michigan no. Avenue? Did you go to the city limits of Inkster? No. Did you travel in a light covered colored Cadillac that day? It's not white. A light color, I said. Did you hear? Pan. Uh, is it a light color or no? It looks white. Okay. And were you driving at any point in time westbound <coughs> by the budget inn shortly before you were stopped? No. Now, the car that you were driving in, was it a two-door or a four-door? It was a four-door. The car was not in your name, is that correct? Yes. Because you could not have a vehicle in your name, is that correct? Until I straightened my license out. You had had problems with your license, is that correct? Yes, Okay. You had problems um, with a suspended driver's license, correct? Yes. You knew that you had a suspended driver's license that day. The yes. day that you were arrested on January 28, 2015. Yes. Isn't that correct? This is not the first time that you've ever been arrested by a police department, is it? No. You heard Mr. Donaldson say that you didn't have any criminal record. Right. But I don't want to go into what the crimes were as much as to ask you the question. You have been arrested and taken in by the police on 13 separate occasions. I'm going to He knows that it's driving while license suspended, and then he says, 
I no, no, I'm going to uh, give them some latitude to establish something other than him being arrested if there's another person. No, Judge, we discussed this before the case even began. Sir, you were arrested now with the concession of the prosecutor 13 times for driving while on a suspended license. I've never been, been arrested 13 times. You've been arrested 20, you've been stopped 28 times. I've never been stopped with 28 times. Okay, very good, go ahead. How many times were you arrested for driving on a suspended driver's license? Four times. Four times. What's the motive? What's the reason? Because it, he knows how it goes when somebody stops him with the police. I'm allowed for his familiarity of dealing with the police when stopped. But we really don't, you know, we've done enough with why he was stopped. Okay. Sir, when you were stopped, you did not remain in your vehicle, did you? I remained in my vehicle when I was stopped. Well, you, you, uh, I say, threw open the door. You opened up your door. I opened my door and put my uh, both arms out. Both arms. Remember going on TV and telling people, when this case was first in the, in the media, that you would roll down your window and put your arms out the window? I never said that. You never said that? I never said that. Let me ask you a question. At that time, not where it's specifically, but what city did you live in? What's specifically here? State of Detroit. And you stayed in Detroit? Right. And you worked where? I worked in Dearborn. one. Okay. Now, what year was that car? That it Cadillac? It was 2011. Oh, okay. And when did you get that Cadillac? Uh, 2010. Okay, but it wasn't in your name, right? right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so living in Detroit, you didn't drive westbound on Michigan Avenue to go over to the budget inn? No, I was taking a uh, good friend. They called me National Cook. I stopped by the store and bring a blind friend some uh, beer liquor. A, a blind friend? A blind friend some beer liquor. What a nice, oh, yeah. What a nice thing for you to do. You know who Amy Williams is? Pardon? You know who Amy Williams is? Yes. Is that your boyfriend? Is uh, yes, I know both of them. You uh, you bought the liquor for her and for him. Yes, because she she didn't want to go out. She didn't want to go out. That's, what she, her, her, her. that's what she told you. So he called you be quiet. He called you on the phone and told you get some beer and liquor for him. Right. What'd you get? I got a uh, four ounce bottle of a Bud Light and uh, some Remy Martin. Some Remy Martin, what'd you yeah. get? A half a pint of a fifth. It was a double shot, I wasn't it? A, um, uh, it was, um, a double shot. Was it no, a big bottle? It was a medium bottle. It was a medium bottle? Yes. How much did that medium bottle cost? A Remy, VSOP. How do you know? Because I run the I'm on BSOB now. It costs about, about, 13, about, about 13 dollars, I think right. it was. And Let's go the, beyond that. You get over to uh, to drop off this, this liquor. Where do they live? They stay the apartment <laughs> complex. I was going to get Off Mission Avenue, near John Daly. Okay. And you're saying that you were there with her or with him? No, I said I was dropping off when I pulled in the parking lot and we gave her the bag of fair ass my saw uh, undercover. Sir, uh, sir, sir, I gotta listen to my question. All right. Did you go to the parking lot of their place? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. okay. Now, did you meet with the blind guy that you were supposed to be taking the alcohol and the beer to? No, I met with the girlfriend. Oh, you met with her. Did she come out in the parking lot? <coughs> she came out in the parking lot to pick it up. Okay, pick and, and, and you, you gave her the alcohol? Yeah, I gave her the alcohol and beer. Did you roll down the window to do that, or did you get out of the car? I opened my car door. You opened your car door? Yes. Did you have a drink with her that day? No. You, you, this is a woman that you've spoken to on a few occasions since this has occurred. Is that right? I spoke to a couple times. Okay. Going back to the arrest and the fact that you've had police contact before, you know that when a police officer comes and approaches you in your car, you know better than to open a door, don't you? 
Better than. Better than. No, rephrase that. Okay. A police officer approaching you is armed, are they not? Yes. You recognize that in the dark of night that police officers might be concerned about your activity while you're inside a car? Yes. What time of the day or night is this, this is at 945. Excuse me, witness. 945. Thank you. I got credibility I didn't intend to get. Okay, go ahead. Did you meet with the blind guy that you were supposed to be taking the alcohol and the beer to? I met with her. Oh, you met with her. Did she come out in the parking lot? Yeah, she came in the parking lot to pick it up. Okay, and, and, and you, you gave her the alcohol? Yeah, I gave her the alcohol and the beer. Did you roll down the window to do that, or did you get out of the car? I opened my car door. You opened your car door? Yes. Did you have a drink with her that day? No. You, you, this is a woman that you've spoken to on a few occasions since this has occurred. Is that right? I spoke to a couple times. Okay. Going back to the arrest and the fact that you've had police contact before, you know that when a police officer comes and approaches you in your car, you know better than to open a door, don't you? Better than. Better than. No, rephrase that. Okay. A police officer approaching you is armed, are they not? Yes. You recognize that in the dark of night that police officers might be concerned about your activity while you're inside a car? Yes. What time of the day or night this, is it? This is at 9.45. Excuse me, witness. 9.45. Thank you. I got credibility I didn't intend to get. Okay, go ahead. Dark? Dark out? I mean, it was dark out. Okay. Uh, you heard the prosecutor ask you about lighting. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, Oakland Park turns into another street. There's there's plenty of lighting on that street, isn't there? Just, what's just the name of the street you said? Oakland Park. Oakland Park Boulevard. Right. Okay. When you go down Oakland Park, half the street is real dark, and the only lit area is by the uh, old precinct. The only lit area is by the precinct. Right. Sir. Is that why you didn't stop right away? No, I stopped because I was in the potholes. And when I finally got to the light, that's my lit area, that's my stop. What has the potholes got to do with the lit area? With the, because I was, I was in the potholes. When you were saying dodging them, you didn't, you went around them. I was going correct? around them. Okay. So let me ask you something. Do you admit weaving your car that evening? Yes, I was driving the problem. Okay, do you admit dri uh, driving past a stop sign and rolling through the stop sign? I stopped at the stop sign. Com to through. a complete stop, like people are supposed to do, a complete stop where your car was not moving at all? I rolled to a complete stop. You rolled to a complete stop right. and that's not at the true. first stop sign? Yes. Do you remember? When you went up to the second stop sign, did you roll to a complete stop? Yes or no? Do you yes. Know? Okay. And, and and at that time, where did you stop? Did you stop in the middle of the intersection, or did you stop before the stop sign? I stopped before the stop sign. Okay. And when you stopped before the stop sign, when you went to take off again, did you almost get into an accident with a vehicle coming through? No. Did you ever see another vehicle that was going perpendicular from right to left in front of you? No. As you were rolling, I'm sorry, as you were stopped at a stop sign? No. Okay. Going back to now, when you are stopped, you did not put your hands at 10 and 2 on the, on the, on the driver's wheel. What did you say? Wheel. You did not put your hands at 10 and 2 on your steering wheel, did you? When I was stopped? When you were stopped. I had my arm out the window. I mean, out of the, uh, out of the, uh, when I my door, I held both arms out. Did you say... Out the window? Is that wrong? And you said out the window. Yeah, yeah. Out the door. Out the door, okay. Did you make the same mistake on television when you said you put your hands out the window? I never said that on television. Okay. Before you put your, door, your arms out the door, <coughs> and before you opened the door, did you put your hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel? 
No. So that the police officer could see your hands. No, I didn't. Did you what what did what did you have in your hand? I did nothing. Did you reach to the right as you were uh, in the car and before you opened the door? No. Did you reach to the right after you opened the door? No. Sir, isn't it true that when the door was open that you went like this? No. For the record, your body indicating from left to right. I, when I opened the door, I turned my body turned up. Which way did you turn? I turned my body to the left. So the only way that you turned was left. Right. I held my arm, both hands out the door. Okay. All right. When you say right, do you mean correct or the direction right? Who me? Right. You just said right and left. Okay. Well, let's let's be clear. Are you telling me? that the only movement that you made once your car was stopped was to open the door and put your hands out to the left? Yeah, that's the only movement I made. And you did not make? No. Turn. And your head would not have moved inside the car to the right? No, my head moved to the left toward the door and I held my both arms out. How many times have you view, viewed the video in this case? I don't watch the video. But Ever? I might have watched it three or four times, but I don't watch it. You know the video was played on TV, right? Yeah, but I, I didn't watch it. I'm no, sorry. I spoke over you. What did you say? I didn't watch it. Ever? I, I mean, I watched it, but I didn't watch it that many times. Who did you watch it with? I watched it by myself. I saw it on the news. And how many times did you watch it? Maybe three or four times. That's it. And you didn't see your head move to the right? No. And you didn't, uh, you didn't move to the right? No, I moved to the left. And when the police officers took you to the ground, you complied with them. You did not in any way resist? I didn't resist at all. You said that Officer Melendez had something in his hand. What did he have in his hand? He was a shiny object in his hand. When I was, was on the ground, he was tight. What did you see? A shiny object. I don't know what it was. Well, was that something that you saw when he struck you or before he struck you? When he was striking me, I had to turn around a little bit to look with my uh, uh, bow me, and that's when I saw something in his glove, whatever he had on. I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not understanding you. And you have to forgive me because I have a difficulty hearing. When he was striking you with his hand, did he have gloves on or off? I think he had gloves on. And you say that in his hand, and he had an object which was shiny. Right. Anything you can tell me about that that might help me to further describe what it is? I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I, it was that head it was. But that's what it was. It was hitting you in the head. Right, the side of my head. Okay. On the side of your head? Right. Where, where you ended up bleeding? Right. And and it was in his hand when he hits you in the head every time. Yes. Did you look at the video to see whether or not you could see anything in his hand? No, I saw no, I didn't see the video, but I saw it myself in person. I know. But you didn't see it in the video. No, I didn't see the video. Did you complain to anybody at the hospital? that you had been hit in the head, head with an object and describe it as a shiny object. I, can, I think I did, I can't remember. All right. Now, you're getting hit in the head and you say you're not resisting, correct? Right. All right. Did you bite Officer Melendez? Never did. Did he tell you stop biting before he hit you in the head? Never bit him. You never bit him? Did you tell me you're going to bite him again? No. no. Okay. Never told him that. All right. Now I'm going to ask you to come with me at this portion of the arrest. When, when you were arrested and you were on the ground, did there come a time when Officer Melendez stopped striking you in the head? Do you remember? Yes, you I remember. remember. Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes. Okay. Do you remember struggling after that? No. 
Did you struggle after that? I didn't struggle at all. Okay. Did you keep your hands from being pulled behind your back? I'm sorry, I'm using my right. I mean my my uh, I mean my left. Did you did you did you try to keep your hand from being handcuffed behind your back? No. Did you get a handcuff on your wrist? At some point before everything stopped, before you were picked up. He was I, I remember Okay, so you don't remember your arm, your one arm breaking free, correct? My, my left arm was, was, being, was being handcuffed, and this arm right here was just under me, protecting my face while he was being. But your left arm, my you left remember arm free, your left arm, I'm sorry, sir. Okay. Go ahead. One officer was trying to take my left arm while I was on the ground. Well, I was getting beaten. Do you remember that hand breaking free? Hand never broke free. It never no. broke free. I was, I was you remember beaten. breaking free with a handcuff on it? No. I never broke free. Hmm. And the person that was trying to put the handcuff on your left hand, is that the one you said had the skull cap on? So. You described two people that were trying to subdue you, one of whom had a skull cap on. Is that right? Right. The one that came to the right inside of my door was the one that had a skull cap on. The first one? Right. That's 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 the one that was on the uh, outside of the door. And, and that's what you remember? The pressure that you remember was the pressure to your windpipe, is that right? Yes. I said larynx, you said windpipe, you mean the front right here, right? Right, right here. Nothing on the sides? He had his whole arm right here in front of my throat. But you didn't complain about... Can we have a description? Or I do. Please. If I can, for the record, you're indicating with your right arm at a 45 degree angle? Yeah, that's how you had me. With your, with your, with your chin? I'm where? Choking me. Where was your chin? Was my it chin, above or below his arm? My chin was uh, below his arm. Were you trying to get your chin in a position where you could bite him? No. And you say you didn't bite him? I didn't bite him. You remember that the temperature that night was very cold? Yes, it was cold. Very cold. No, it wasn't that cold because I had a light jacket on. A light jacket? So if somebody else said it was 20 degrees below, below zero, you would not agree with That's that? That's improper. All right. Well, was it balmy or freezing? It's kind of, kind of warm. It's kind of you were not high that night? No. Not high on cocaine that night? No. You had not ingested cocaine that evening? No. You do admit that you did have and opiate morphine given to you at the hospital for medicinal purposes. You said yes. you didn't know, Judge. Right. Huh? You said you didn't know. Do you know if you were given morphine at the hospital? I, I think I recall you had some of the two. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Did you have a phone that night? Yes. Were you on the phone that evening? Yes, I was. Yes, I was on the phone that evening when I was leaving the apartment complex. I was talking to one of my co-workers. Sammy? Yes, Sammy. Uh, you had had a brief conversation with Sammy? Yes, we was talking on the phone. When I was, like I said, when I turned it up. I, I don't want to hear what you say, what, what they said. You go ahead, I'll let you answer, but I just didn't. Okay. Yes, I was having a conversation with her.
you have a phone conversation with Amy Williams that night? Yeah, she told me that, um, yeah. And how long was that in relationship to before you were stopped? Well, I talked to her uh, when I got to her apartment complex to let her know that I had to be her liquor. Okay. Now, last year I'm going to go into it. Okay. When you were on Oakland Park Boulevard, whatever that street was, leaving or, or going in a westbound direction towards Inkster. You saw the police lights behind you, didn't you? No, I didn't. No. You had indicated that you were conscious of some surveillance that had been occurred with this black pickup truck or something. Yes, it was around the apartment complex. Why would you be worried about a police officer if you didn't have any drugs on you that night? Because I remember an uh, undercover car having in the back of me when I was passing the look at Amy. And the lights was out. And you were concerned. No, I wasn't really concerned. Well, you mentioned it, did you not? That I, you just were, saw, I just saw a black car. And you mentioned it to you Amy? Know, and, and, just wait. Go ahead, answer the question. Go ahead. I mean, um... Uh, <laughs> You were concerned and had mentioned that you were being surveilled by what you thought was a police vehicle that was undercover. Did you not? No, I never said that. You remember seeing a black pickup truck and being concerned that it might be the police? It's a black SUV. A black SUV? Right. Okay. Why would you be concerned about a black SUV that you could not identify if you had nothing to hide and you were not doing anything wrong. Because the, the car had got too close to me when I was passing Amy her liquor. And when I turned around to, to look at who it was, when they got out of the parking lot into the street, that's when they turned their lights on and made a right hand turn. Turned their Headlights on. Lights? Not, not, not emergency lights. Um, no, head, headlights on. But you thought that that was a police undercover vehicle? No. I know who it was. Okay. I thought maybe it could have been somebody who was leaving the apartment complex. <coughs> Ever been to the budget inn? No. Were you at the E&K liquor store that night picking up the liquor uh, just before you... Uh, just before you were arrested? Yes, on Michigan Avenue near, uh, near I-275. No. There's a, there's a liquor store on Michigan Avenue not far from the budget, and were you at that liquor store? No, I was at the liquor store on Michigan near I-275. Do you remember testifying in the preliminary examination? You didn't remember where you bought the liquor? I don't remember I bought the liquor. I was not by it. You remember, uh, um, well, okay, that's fine. So you were not high that night? No. You did not ingest any cocaine that night? No. And your urine did not have cocaine in it? No. Were you ever told at the hospital for reasons of medical treatment that you had Opiates and urine in your in your opiates, I'm sorry, and, opiates and cocaine in your urine. No. Thank you, Judge. No. no. And you say that's not your urine? It wasn't my urine. I don't know who urine they took. But you do remember that they did take urine. No. Uh, you don't? No urine from you. They took no urine from you. No. Okay. okay. Nothing further, Judge. We direct. You know everything they did to you when you were getting free? When you were in the hospital, do you know everything they did uh, did to you? Yes, I do. Do you remember every medicine they gave you and when they gave it to you and what they did and what procedures they did? Well, uh, half the medicine they gave me, uh, I wasn't, they came and put it inside the tube while I was free. Okay. So the how do you know if you were asleep what they needed? <laughs> <laughs> if you were asleep, how do you know they put it in a tube? Because, you know, I, I, when I kind of woke up, I felt somebody, uh, a nurse, standing next to me, pooped on the tube. Is there really a blind fern? 
Yes. How far is that liquor store from the budget motel? If you look at Charlotte Kills, I mean, I have $275. And you, where's this budget motel? You know what I mean? I don't know no budget motel. Okay. You ain't never been in there? <laughs> no, I'm never. And your memory is that the officer, besides Officer Melendez, that was at the scene, had a skull cap on? Yes, when it came to the uh, vehicle, it was toward the right. Okay. And, that's, and is that the guy that pulled you out? Yes. In your memory, is he a skull cap, right? Yes. Okay. When you say skull cap, or, uh, you talking like a uh, skull cap like the Pope wears, a little tiny one in the back, or are you talking no, about the something No, the black skull cap with the put down your phone. Oh, okay, it's uh, like a net hat? No. No, I'm not understanding. Yeah, well, Judge, I, I, he's leading him. I'm asking. I'm trying to understand oh, what he means. Well, well I'm going to object. Let him talk. Testify. Let him talk. Go ahead. Thank you. Describe it for you. The skull cap he had on, he had on was a knit, knitted skull cap, and he had to pull down, and he had to fold up around the edges. Okay. I have nothing further. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Dick. We've done, you can sit down. We've done a lot for today, as I've indicated to you. I do not go on Friday, so I will see you. You can sit down. Uh, I'll see you first thing on Monday at 9 30. As you can see, you know, we're moving along with the case. It's my understanding that there are approximately three or four more witnesses by the people. And uh, so we're doing very well. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you Monday. Now, I'll see you all right, don't you? If I can see, don't find anything on TV regarding this case or in the, you know, you have great people. Did you meet with the blind guy that you were supposed to be taking the alcohol and the beer to? No, I met with his girlfriend. Oh, you met with her. Did she come out in the parking lot? Yeah, she came out in the parking lot and picked it up. Okay, and, and, and you, you gave her the alcohol? Yeah, I gave her the alcohol and the beer. Did you roll down the window to do that or did you get out of the car? I opened my car door. You opened your car door? Yes. Did you have a drink with her that day? No. You, you, this is a woman that you've spoken to on a few occasions since this has occurred, is that right? I spoke to her a couple times. Okay. Going back to the arrest and the fact that you've had police contact before, you know that when a police officer comes and approaches you in your car, you know better than to open a door, don't you? Better than. Better than. No, rephrase that. Okay. A police officer approaching you is armed, are they not? Yes. You recognize that in the dark of night that police officers might be concerned about your activity while you're inside a car? Yes. What time of the day or night this, is this? This is at 945. Excuse me, witness. 945. Thank you. I got credibility I didn't intend to get. Go ahead. Dark? Dark out? I mean, it was dark out. Okay. Uh, you heard the prosecutor ask you about lighting? Uh, right. Okay. Uh, Oakland Park turns into another street. There's there's plenty of lighting on that street, isn't there? Which is, what's just the name of the street you said? Oakland Park. Oakland Park Boulevard. Right. Okay. When you go down open park, half the street is real dark. And the only lit area is by the uh, old precinct. The only lit area is by the precinct. Right. Sir. Is that why you didn't stop right away? No, I stopped because I was dodging potholes. And when I finally got to the light, that's my lit area, that's my stop. What does the potholes got to do with the lit area? With the, because I was dodging the potholes. When you were saying dodging them, you didn't, you went around. I was going correct? around them. Okay. So let me ask you something. Do you admit weaving your car that evening? Yes, I was dodging the problem. Okay, do you admit uh, driving past a stop sign and rolling through the stop sign? 
I stopped at the stop sign. Com to a complete stop, like people are supposed to do, a complete stop where your car was not moving at all. I rolled to a complete stop. You rolled to a complete stop right. and that's not at the true. first stop sign. Yes. Do you remember? When you went up to the second stop sign, did you roll to a complete stop? Yes or no? Do you yes. Remember? Okay. And, and, and at that time, where did you stop? Did you stop in the middle of the intersection or did you stop before the stop sign? I stopped before the stop sign. Okay, and when you stopped before the stop sign, when you went to take off again, did you almost get into an accident with a vehicle coming through? No. Did you ever see another vehicle that was going perpendicular from right to left in front of you no. as you were rolling, I'm sorry, as you were stopped at a stop sign? No. Okay. Going back to now, when you are stopped, you did not put your hands at 10 and 2 on the, on the, on the driver's what you say? wheel. You did not put your hands at 10 and 2 on your steering wheel, did you? When I was stopped? When you were stopped. I had my arms out the window. I mean, out of the, uh, out of the, uh, when I opened my door, I held both arms out. Did you say out the window? My Is that wrong? You said out the window. Yeah, yeah. Out the door. Out the door, okay. Did you make the same mistake on television when you said you put your hands out the window? I never said it on television. Okay. Before you put your, door, your arms out the door, <coughs> and before you opened the door, did you put your hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel? No. So that the police officer could see your hands? No, I didn't. Did you, what, what, did, what did you have in your hand? I did nothing. Did you reach to the right? as you were uh, in the car and before you opened the door? No. Did you reach to the right after you opened the door? No. Sir, isn't it true that when the door was open that you went like this? No. For the record. Twisted your body indicating from left to right? I, when I opened the door, I turned my body to the left. Which way did you turn? I turned my body to the left. So the only way that you turned was left? Right. I held my arm, both hands out the door. Okay. All right. When you say right, do you mean correct or the direction right? Who, me? Right. You just said right and left. Okay. Well, let's, let's be clear. Are you telling me that the only movement that you made once your car was stopped was to open the door and put your hands out to the left? Yeah, that's the only movement I made. And you did not make? No. Turn, and your head would not have moved inside the car to the right? No, my head moved to the left towards the door and I held my both arms out. How many times have you view, viewed the video in this case? I don't watch the video. Ever? I might have watched it three or four times, but I don't watch it. You know the video was played on TV, right? Yeah, but I, I didn't watch it. I'm oh, sorry. I spoke over you. What did you say? I didn't watch it. Ever? I, I mean, I watched it, but I didn't watch it that many times. Who did you watch it with? Watched it by myself. He saw the news. And how many times did you watch it? Maybe three or four times. That's it. And you didn't see your head move to the right. No. And you didn't. Uh, you didn't move to the right. No, I moved to the left. And when the police officers took you to the ground, you complied with them. You did not in any way resist. Didn't resist at all. You said that Officer Melendez had something in his hand. What did he have in his hand? He was a shiny object in his hand. When I was, was on the ground, he was tight. What did you see? A shiny object. I don't know what it was. Well, was that something that you saw when he struck you or before he struck you? When he was striking me, I had to turn around a little bit to look with my... Uh, uh, for me, and that's when I saw something in this glove, whatever you had on. I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not understanding you. And you have to forgive me because I have a difficulty hearing. When he was striking you with his hand, did he have gloves on or off? He had, he had gloves on. And you say that in his hand, he and had an object which was shiny. Right. Anything you can tell me about that that might help me? To further describe what it is? I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I, it was that head with 
But that's so what it was. It was hitting you in the head. Right, the side of my head. Okay. On the side of your head? Right. Where, where you ended up bleeding? Right. And, and it was in his hand when he hit you in the head every time? Yes. Did you look at the video to see whether or not you could see anything in his hand? No, I saw, no, I didn't see the video, but I saw it myself in person. I know, but you didn't see it in the video. No, I didn't see the video. Did you complain to anybody at the hospital that you had been hit in the head with an object and describe it as a shiny object? I think I did, I can't remember. All right. Now, you're getting hit in the head, and you say you're not resisting, correct? Right. All right. Did you bite Officer Melendez? Never bit him. Did he tell you stop biting before he hit you in the head? Never bit him. You never bit him? No. Did you tell him you're going to bite him again? No. no. Okay. Never told him that. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to come with me at this portion of the arrest. When, when you were arrested and you were on the ground, did there come a time when Officer Melendez stopped striking you in the head? Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes, I yes. yes. Okay. Do you remember struggling after that? No. Did you struggle after that? I didn't struggle at all. Okay. Did you keep your hands from being pulled behind your back? I'm sorry, I'm using my right. I mean my my uh, I mean my left. Did you did you did you try to keep your hand from being handcuffed behind your back? No. Did you get a handcuff on your wrist? At some point before everything stopped before you were picked up? He was... I, I remember the handcuff on my back had got up. Okay, so you don't remember your arm, your one arm breaking free, correct? My left arm was, was, being, was being handcuffed and this arm right here was just under me protecting my face while he was being. But your left arm, my you left remember arm free, your left arm, I'm sorry sir. Go ahead. One officer was trying to take my left arm while I was on the ground, while I was getting beaten. Do you remember that hand breaking free? Hand never broke free. You know, never broke free. I was, I was you remember beaten. breaking free with a handcuff on it? No. I never broke free. Hmm. And the person I was trying to put the handcuff on your left hand, is that the one you said had the skull cap on? I think so. You described two people that were trying to subdue you, one of whom had a skull cap on, is that right? Right, the one that came to the right inside of my door was the one that had the skull cap on. The first one? Right, that's that's what you that's what you the was on the uh, outside of the door. And, and that's what you remember? The pressure that you remember was the pressure to your windpipe, is that right? Yes. I said larynx, you said windpipe, you mean the front right here, right? Right, right here. Nothing on the sides? He had his whole arm right here in front of my throat. But you didn't complain about... Can we have a description? Of I do. If I can, for the record, you're indicating with your right arm at a 45 degree angle? Yeah, that's how he had me. With your, with your, with your chin? I'm where? Choking me. Where was your chin? Was my it chin, above or below his arm? My chin was uh, below his arm. Were you trying to get your chin in a position where you could bite him? No. And you say you didn't bite him? I didn't bite him. You remember that the temperature that night was very cold? Yes, it was cold. Very cold. No, it wasn't that cold because I had a light jacket on. 
a light jacket. So if somebody else said it was 20 degrees below, below zero, you would not agree with That's that. That's improper. All right. Well, was it balmy or freezing? You were not high that night? No. Not high on cocaine that night? No. You had not ingested cocaine that evening? No. You do admit that you did have an opiate morphine given to you at the hospital for medicinal purposes? You said yes. you didn't know, Judge. Right. Huh? You said you didn't know. Do you know if you were given morphine at the hospital? I, I think I recall you had some of the two. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Did you have a phone that night? Yes. Were you on the phone that evening? Yes, I was. Yes, I was on the phone that evening when I was leaving the apartment complex. I was talking to one of my coworkers. Sammy? Yes, Sammy. All right. You had had a brief conversation with Sammy? Yes, we was talking on the phone. When I was, like I said, when I turned it up. I, I don't want to hear what you say, what, what they said. You go ahead, I'll let you answer, but I just didn't. Okay. Yes, I was having a conversation with her. Did you have a phone conversation with Amy Williams that night? Yes, yeah, she told me that, um, yes. And how long was that in relationship to before you were stopped? Well, I talked to her uh, when I got to her apartment complex to let her know that I had to be her neighbor. Okay. Now, last year I'm going to go into it. Okay. When you were on Oakland Park Boulevard, whatever that street was, leaving or, or going in a westbound direction towards Inkster. You saw the police lights behind you, didn't you? No, I didn't. No. You had indicated that you were conscious of some surveillance that had been occurred with this black pickup truck or something. Yes, it was around the apartment complex. Why would you be worried about a police officer if you didn't have any drugs on you that night? Because I remember an uh, undercover car having in the back of me when I was passing the look at the Amy. And the lights was out. And you were concerned? No, I wasn't really concerned. Well, you mentioned it, did you not? That I, you just were, saw, I just saw a black car. And you mentioned it to you Amy? Know, and it, just wait. Yeah. Go ahead, answer the question. Go ahead. You were concerned and had mentioned that you were being surveilled by what you thought was a police vehicle that was undercover. Did you not? No, I never said that. You remember seeing a black pickup truck and being concerned that it might be the police. It's a black SUV. A black SUV? Right. Okay. Why would you be concerned about a black SUV that you could not identify if you had nothing to hide and you were not doing anything wrong? Because the, the car had got too close to me when I was passing Amy her liquor. And when I turned around to, to look at who it was, when they got out of the parking lot into the street, that's when they turned their lights on. And the, Made a right hand turn. Turned their headlights on. Lights? Not, not, not emergency lights. No, um, no, head, headlights on. But you thought that that was a police undercover vehicle? No, I know who it was. Okay. I thought maybe it could have been somebody who was leaving the apartment complex. <coughs> mm -hmm. Ever been to the budget end? No. Were you at the E&K liquor store that night picking up the liquor uh, just before you uh, just before you were arrested? Yes, on Michigan Avenue near uh, near I 275. No, there's a there's a liquor store on Michigan Avenue not far from the budget. And were you at that liquor store? 
No, I was at the liquor store on Michigan near I-275. Do you remember testifying in the preliminary examination? You didn't remember where you bought the liquor? I don't remember where I bought the liquor. I was not buying it. You remember uh, um, well, okay, that's fine. So you were not high that night? No. You did not ingest any cocaine that night? No. And your urine did not have cocaine in it? No. Were you ever told at the hospital for reasons of medical treatment that you had Opiates and urine in your in your opiates, I'm sorry, and, opiates urine. and cocaine in your urine. No. Thank you, Judge. No. no. And you say that's not your urine? It wasn't my urine. I don't know who urine they took. But you do remember that they did take urine. No. Uh, you don't? No urine from me. They took no urine from you. No. Okay. okay. Nothing further, Judge. We direct. You know everything they did to you when you were being free? When you were in the hospital, do you know everything they did uh, did to you? Yes, I do. Do you remember every medicine they gave you and when they gave it to you and what they did and what procedures they did? Well, uh, half the medicine they gave me, uh, I wasn't, they came and put it inside the tube while I was free. Okay. So the answer how you know if you were asleep what they needed? <laughs> <laughs> if you were asleep, how you know they put it in a tube? Because, you know, I, I, when I kind of woke up, I felt somebody, uh, a nurse, standing next to me, two, seven, two. Is there really a blind friend? Yes. Okay. How far is that liquor store from the budget motel? You look at the store I went to, it was on, I had to be at 275. And you, where's this budget motel? You know what I mean? I don't know the budget motel. Okay. You ain't never been in there? <laughs> no, I'm never. <laughs> And your memory is that the officer, besides Officer Melendez, that was at the scene, had a skull cap on? Yes, when it came to the uh, vehicle, it was towards the right. Okay. And, that's, and is that the guy that pulled you out? Yes. And your memory is he had a skull cap, right? Yes. Okay. When you say skull cap, or, uh, you talking like a uh, skull cap like the Pope wears, a little tiny one in the back, or are you talking about no, the black skull cap? With the, Put down your phone. Oh, okay, it's um, <coughs> like a net hat. No, no, I'm not understanding. Well, Judge, I, I, he's leading him. I'm asking. I'm trying to understand what he means. Well, I'm going to object. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let, him Let him talk. Let him talk. Go ahead. Thank you. Describe it, please. The skull cap he had on, he had on was a knit, knitted skull cap, and he had to pull it down and he had to fold up around the edges. Okay. I have nothing further. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Dick. We've done, you can sit down for We've done a lot for today, as I've indicated to you. We're <coughs> not on Friday, so I will see you. You can sit down. Uh, I'll see you first thing on Monday at 9 30. As you can see, you know, we're moving along with the case. It's my understanding that there are approximately three or four more witnesses by the people. And uh, so we're doing very well. Have a wonderful uh, weekend, and I'll see you Monday. Now, I don't know. I'll rise from the truth. I mean, if you don't want anything on TV regarding this case, or in the, you know, you'll have a great weekend. Thank <laughs> you.